All right, uh, a warm welcome to this Bromma webinar, gain full control over spread operations with Bromma spread monitoring system. Uh, we can see that people are still joining, so we will give it just one minute before we start. Okay, it's now 11.01 CET, uh, so we will move on with the webinar. Uh, again, a warm welcome. I'm Joachim Hebel, and I'm responsible for digitalization in Bromma. And with me, I have Hans Svanfeldt, who is responsible for what we call integrated solutions. Hello, Hans. Hi, Joachim, Joachim and everybody else online. All right, so before we get into the webinar content, I'm just going to share some basic house rules for this webinar. So uh, all your participants will be muted during the whole duration of the webinar, and this is just to make sure we don't have any unwanted background noise. If you have any questions uh, that pop up during the webinar, please type those into the question panel that you find on the right hand side and we will then in the end of the webinar try to answer them as, as good as we can um, and then the last comment the whole webinar will be recorded so we will also distribute it afterwards so you have a chance to recap if you missed anything that's about it so now we get going and i hand over to hans for a quick presentation of broma all right, thank you. So Broma is a part of the Cargo Tech Group, and for over 50 years, we have been delivering crane spreaders to more than 500 terminals in over 90 countries. Traditionally, we have been manufacturing uh, spreaders for ship to shore, yard, and mobile harbor cranes. However, today, our solutions also includes digital services that are designed to optimize the spreader operations. Uh, in Broma, we have always been focusing on innovation. It has always been at the center of everything what we do. We call it the Broma's tradition of innovation. So today we will talk about one of our latest innovations, the Broma Spreader Monitoring System, the SMS. So today's agenda, we will be addressing a few key questions. Firstly, we will briefly review how do spreaders actually influence terminal operations and what are the key challenges our customers face in maintaining spreaders. Then we will also go into the main subject of today, which is how can Bromma spreader monitoring system help solving these challenges? How does it work? And we will also perform a short demonstration of, of the application. Then lastly, we will look into how Broma can help you in implementing the system at your site. So I will hand over to you, Joachim, uh, to the first question uh, of today. All right, very good. Thank you, Hans. Uh, so, then how do spreaders impact their terminal operations? Well, it's no secret that unscheduled equipment downtime can be very problematic. And it can also be very costly, especially when it comes to cranes and when it comes to spreaders. So, um, and I'm gonna move on to the next page here. So when we talk to our customers, we typically hear that up to 30 to 50% of the key cranes downtime is spreader related. And, and there is a ripple effect here, because if the, the spreader fails, the, the crane is not useful anymore. Uh, in the worst case, you have a ripple effect going to delayed vessels. You have maybe even vessels queuing out outside the, up outside the terminal. 
There you can have safe, safety implications, you can have goods being damaged. So, and these are of course extreme examples. In the best case, you only have a spread malfunction, you have a spare spreader, you can bring it out there, but there is still a risk. So we see that this unplanned downtime is something we really want to avoid. And before we go any further, we actually have a quick poll. So we have one question uh, to you all. So, uh, and it's, it's how, let's see, I actually lost the question here, but um, you should be able to read it on the screen. And now in this poll here, so you just click whatever you feel appropriate. So how often do you experience unplanned spread of downtime? Never, rarely, frequently, or very frequently. So please go ahead and if you have any comments here, please fill them in. Okay, so we can see some responses coming in here. Uh, of course, we do not want to have any spreader downtime at all, but we realize that's a little bit part of reality. Uh, we see with answers here, we have some more than 85% of people responding that frequently or very frequently. So um, we think we have a clear, cl clear case to discuss, basically. Uh, so, what we have been looking at is then with this this spreader, this unwanted downtime and with the digital information we have at hand, what can we do to try to help and address these problems? Uh, and we have been developing this SMS tool now for quite a while. And in this SMS, we are working very much with the spreader help. Uh, and this is our contribution or our way to try to find a better way in working with and maintaining spreaders. So this spreader help, let me just quickly explain what it is and how it works. So go to the next page here if I can get it. Yeah. So the spreader help is one single KPI or one single metric that we have de been developing based on, on all Bromas accumulated spread of knowledge. So we've been working with our R&D, we've been working with our service technicians from around the globe, we've been talking to customers. So in the IoT solutions or the diagnostic solution on board on the machine that we have, there are more than 800 different types of issues we are tracking. And when we combine this with the productivity of the spreader, we can derive this health value. And, uh, and, and this is then the basis for how SMS works. And, and this health value is something we recalculate continuously uh, throughout the operation. This spreader health allows you to get an instant view of the current status of each spreader in your fleet. And it allows you then to be proactive in addressing these issues before you go into operation or before you have any, any real impact. So SMS helps you understand the health of each machine you have. It also points you to the location of the problem and it gives you directions on how to fix the problem. So we don't only point out the, the machine with the problem, we try to point to the location, we try to explain what you can do to fix it. And this allows you to save time on both fault finding and then it also allows you to stay away from unsafe working locations as much as possible. So um, this in a nutshell is spreader health. One single metric, single KPI that allows you to then understand the status of your fleet. And now Hans. All right, so let us look at what our customers are saying what challenges they are actually facing while managing a fleet of spreaders so in order for us to develop the bromma spreader monitoring system according to our customer needs we interviewed several customers around the world 
We ask them what challenges they are facing uh, when managing a fleet of spreaders based on the and also based on the feedback we have been able to summarize these challenges into four main categories. So regardless if it's an you're running an automated terminal, semi-automated terminal or manual terminal, the knowledge and visibility of spreader health is limited or even non-existent remotely. Also, our customers are spending more time on fixing issues rather than proactively planning their operations. In other words, they would like to be able to have minimum amount of changes and fixes, but rather focus on how to use the fleet more efficiently. And of course, time pressure is always high at the terminal and every minute spent on blindfolded fault finding is very expensive. So in order to save time and money, remote diagnostics is preferred. And lastly, but not least, many of our customers are experiencing challenges related to maintenance planning. Planned maintenance is inflexible and often based on insufficient information. All right, very good, thank you. Hans. And so, so in these discussions with the customers, with our interviews, with, it, it's quite clear that most customers face very similar issues and quite often so regardless of the type of operation. When we went into the design process for SMS, we were able to identify four key elements um, for how a spreader fleet should best be managed. So uh, these are the ones you see here on the screen. So uh, of course, everything is about minimizing unplanned downtime. Downtime is something you have. It's something you should have. There is nothing wrong with that. But you, you, you always need to maintain your equipment from time to time. But you want it to be planned. You don't want it to be unplanned. So there should not be any surprises. That was the per first key element to, to make sure that you go in, can go into a planning mode instead of this reactive mode. Uh, and that leads to the second point. So we were looking at how to achieve this proactive optimization or proactivity in the processes. We see that in many cases, I, even most cases, a lot of the spreader maintenance, uh, the acute or the, the, the severe uh, spreader maintenance is something that is happening reactively. So you have the spreader out in operation, you have an, a breakdown, you need to go out and try to fault find and fix it. And with SMS, we, we then have this ambition of trying to address issues beforehand before they become real problems uh, and that will then give you a much smoother operation. The third pillar here or the third element is remote diagnostics. So by being able to go remote and, and away from the spreader you have a much better possibility to diagnose the whole fleet and you can see what is working well and what is not working well. You can also see a little bit what is about to stop working well, so you can beforehand get an understanding of what you should be doing. And this allows you to get a better understanding of your fleet and it also allows you to spend less time in hazardous situations. Finally, uh, what we call the smart maintenance planning, uh, this is sort of the second side of the tool. So um, there is the, the maintenance you need to do on the spot because something is broken or about to go wrong. There is the planned maintenance uh, where you take care of the wear and tear on the machine, uh, the continuous maintenance. Here we also see a need to be more smart. So with smart, we mean that to do this maintenance and plan this maintenance based on the actual equipment usage. We see surprisingly many situations or cases where we have customers who don't have enough data at hand. So they, they have to do more in monthly scheduling and quarterly scheduling instead of looking at the actual individual machine and how much it's been put to use. So these were sort of the four elements that we had in focus when we started developing the spreader monitoring system. 
All right. So let's move to the next question then. How can SMS solve these challenges and improve the terminal productivity? So SMS is a cloud-based IoT application that can radically increase your efficiency by ensuring your spreaders are up for the task when you actually need them. So let's go through some of the key features of the application before we will actually look into the real application. So SMS allows users to view their spreader fleet in real time and it's providing a clear overview of each spreader's health. Furthermore, it offers recommended solutions to the more than 800 issues that we can detect and it also points you to the location of the problem and it allows you to assess the maintenance needs remotely before you actually approach the spreader during a breakdown. So, and of course, with the maintenance planning module, you get utilization based schedule for the planned maintenance based on our recommendations. But of course, you can also implement your own maintenance plan if that suits you better. And with the spreader statistics, you can analyze the spreader utilization, the performance, and issues over time so you can gain new insights in order to plan both the utilization and also your improvements. Uh, with that, I think it's now time to actually dig into the actual ap application. Very good. So um, let's then switch. I'm going to move over to another page here. Hold on two seconds. Um, so now we will actually do a live demo of the system. So what you see now on the screen is spreader monitoring system. This is our demo environment, so it's not uh, the production environment, but it's, it's, it's an exact copy of production. So this is exactly what you would see if you would have the system yourselves. Um, here on the first page, we see this demonstration terminal and, and the terminal I'm just going to spend a few minutes explaining so this terminal here we have 12 ship to shore spreaders and we have 12 yard spreaders they are of little bit different kinds uh, the ship to shores are mainly STS 45s uh, the yards there we have a little bit of variation the demo terminal is built up of real machines out in productive use today we have scrambled the data, we have uh, sort of disguised them, so not even we really know which terminal they are physically sitting in. And they're a little bit from all over the globe. Uh, but we believe that this is a much more useful way to look at the system, because now you see it for real, you see it live. It also makes demonstrations quite exciting, because they, they, it never looks the same, <laughs> so we never really know. But this is the first page I said, it's the overview, and, and this is where you would spend most of, most of the time in the normal operation. Uh, and you would not spend much time here, it's a few minutes per day and that's it. Um, you see here one of these cards for each machine. The grey cards, those are machines that are currently offline, so they are either in the yard, they, are, they might be hanging in a crane but then powered off. The ones with colors, they are currently connected. So they are live, um, they are powered on, and they might be in active use right now, or they are hanging there, standby, uh, waiting for operations. There is this line here. This is the help bar, and this is what you focus on um, when you work with spreader monitoring system. And basically, the target is to keep the spreader healthy at all times and we can see with these terminals or these machines here that they are mainly not with customers using spreader monitoring system and, and therefore the, the aggregated health here is not as good as it should be and we're going to explain a little bit how you can work with that when you have this tool in place so let's Let's go into one of these machines and I'm, let's pick this one because it's, uh, it's active right now and it has health that is not so good. So basically green means good, you're good to go. Yellow means 
well, warning, this spreader is experiencing problems. It's most likely still operating, but it's getting closer and closer to a point where it might break down. And then if you have the ones in red here, those machines has actually, they actually have broken down. It might be a very short breakdown and it might be possible to just bring it back up again and you can continue working. But if you've had a breakdown, well, there is something severely wrong. It might be a safety uh, situation, it might be a technical malfunction, and then it's something you really want to address. And preferably you find these things beforehand when it's in the yellow, so you can avoid ever getting into the red, because you don't want to have the stops. So what to do then? I, I have my fleet here. I see, well, my fleet is actually in need of a little bit too much maintenance, but still um, it, it's a good starting point. So I pick up machine STS-12 here. That's my, the name I choose on the machine in the terminal. I, I pop up this card here and here I get some basic information. Uh, us in Bromma, we always speak about serial numbers. That's how we relate to the machines. Uh, whereas out in the terminals, each terminal typically have their own asset names. So we, for simplicity, we have the asset name and we have the serial number. So when when Bromma and Terminal are speaking together, well, we, we can have a common understanding of which machines we're worried about. We see here we have a lot of warnings. And on this first page, we, we have a little bit more than one week overview. So this is just to get the quick snapshot. We have a whole lot of warnings. We have a few critical warnings and a couple of errors. So this machine has been experiencing a little bit too much of the things we don't want to have in normal cases. But this still is just, as I said, this is just a snapshot, so you need to take one step further. Here, when we go into the troubleshooting view, this is where, where all the details come. So we know already from the first page that this is a machine with a help that is not in, in a good condition. So in this case, it's 30% it's, uh, help. We actually, we have taken this a little, it's a bit of gamif gamification, so we've taken this from, from computer games and uh, gotten the inspiration there. So, um, and, and of course, this target to keep the health, the machine healthy, that's, that's an easy thing to understand. On this machine, we have quite a lot of active alerts. So alerts are all the different type of problems. They can be warnings, they can be errors, they can be critical warnings. Um, normally, they come and go. And it's quite normal to have a few of these. Uh, it, it will happen. There you, you might try to lift a container with a bad corner casting and, and you will get a warning from the diagnosis systems that, well, we couldn't lock onto this container. You do a retry and then the warning goes away. Um, on this machine, we have six active alerts. So they are active right now. And, but then if we scroll down, they, they, they give you a bit of information, particularly if you have an active error, so something that is causing a breakdown, that, that can be quite important to attend to. In this case, when we scroll down, we see the history. So now we see the past seven days. I have a seven day filter here. Uh, and if we scroll through the history quickly, we can see that there are 50 alert types that has occurred on this machine over the past uh, week. 50 is too much. If you have 20, that could be quite use, quite a quite common situation, but, but this is too much and, and there is something that, that you need to attend to here. But still, we, we always do a sorting in here on the most frequent ones on top. And we can see that the unlock sensor land side left and water side left, so the left side of the spreader basically, those twist blocks have a lot of problems. So most likely there is an adjustment need on these twist blocks. Um, and when you have this much, well, you are, you, you have a lot of issues in the operation and, and not least you have an elevated risk for an unplanned downtime. So this spreader, there is a risk that it's gonna break down. And, and I'm, I'm here as the, the sort of the digital guy. I'm not the spreader guy. So I think a lot of you listening know more about spreader maintenance than I do. But in this case, I, even I understand. So you, you want to look at these twist blocks here. And for somebody like me, but also mainly for somebody working as a spreader 
mechanic or a spreader technician, we have these descriptions and recommended solutions here. So we have always a descriptive heading and it should be somebody something that anybody could read and get a decent understanding. Of course, the more you work with spreader, the more obvious it's going to be. We also have this extended description here, where we, in this case, have the land side left twist lock, lost unlock sensor indication without any twist lock command. So that gives you then also even more clear understanding. And then in all of these cases, we have a recommended solution. And most often, the recommended solution is a fault finding guide. So there is the first step you need to go through, there is a second step if the third, first didn't solve the problem, third step. In this case, there are four steps. And, um, and that's quite common for most of the, the cases. Now, these are very detailed issues. So, so this level of information you would, in many cases, not find in the manual. But we have uh, gone through a lot of uh, efforts to document it and put it here in the system. Some other details in here, so, but so the key thing is here. So this is now pointing you to what the problem is, why is the help low, and it also points you to, to where, where the problem sits on the spreader and what you need to do to address it, basically. We also have this picture up here on the machine where we point out the corner uh, in, in, in a picture because we have realized that it helps. Um, you normally have a numbering sequence on the corners and these numbering sequences they have a tend of, tendency to, to differ between terminals between machines and everything so so we we are working with clear text to try to get away from that problem there are also a couple of other things here you have a link to the manual so you can immediately uh, get it from here it's the pdf manual um, you also have a link to notes. In, in this case, I'm going to pop it up and you're going to see. So here, since this is the test system, so we have test notes here, obviously, but this is a point where you can add, add a note. Uh, let me um, new note. Uh, there, there, so uh, here, of course, you, you would add something more that makes more sense. But typically here you can, you can keep like a logbook of the machine. So if you've had a certain type of problem, it's, it's been go going on and off, you have done maintenance, you can, you can put notes in here so you can track what's going on with this particular machine. And since this is a cloud-based shared system, so everything you put in here is available for everybody who you have chosen to give access. So within each terminal, you decide yourself if you want to have one user, 200 users, uh, whatever suits your operation best. Then. But so I'm going to take away the notes or take away this page and, and go back here. This is in short, this is how it works. So you look in the overview, you pinpoint the machines with a help that is unsatisfactory. You go here to the troubleshooting, you get clear directions. So, and then of course you need to plan and prioritize how and when you, you can fix this up. A few other small things here. Uh, we also have this maintenance section and we talk about maintenance and maintenance, and we need to make a, a separation here. So we have the scheduled maintenance, the planned maintenance, and those are the things you do uh, at a certain period. So when you have been using your crystal pins for X amount of moves, at some point they need to be replaced. That goes in here. Uh, what we see in the overview and troubleshooting, that is focusing on the health of that particular machine. So there is no direct link into this maintenance here. This planned maintenance, we've also seen that in quite many cases, um, many terminals have insufficient data. So they, they schedule the maintenance for, well, I'm going to do all my twist lock replacements uh, 1st of January, and then you just go through the machines. And maybe you do not have 
the data of, well, how many moves have this particular machine been doing, actually. Here we run the maintenance planning based on the actual utilization of the machine, and that helps you then to get the more smart or efficient maintenance planning. This is also recalculated continuously. So if you start using the machine more, the maintenance interval is going to come faster. And if you use it a little bit less, it's going to be pushed out in time. But there is also some possibilities for yourself. So you, you can choose to, if you don't want it to float around indefinitely, you can choose to pinpoint the date to sort uh, the, the maintenance to a certain date. You can take a very quick look. Uh, so here we get a little bit more instructions about the maintenance. We can pin the date. We can also mark the maintenance completed. And this is, of course, completely open for you to use. You can use it just as a reference, or you can use it for your real maintenance planning. And this is very much depending on how your, how your operation is looking. What you also can do here is you can add your own maintenance tasks. So what we have by default is the Bromma standard maintenance tasks from the manuals, but you can also add yourself. And you can see here we have in previous demonstrations, we have been adding a couple of custom maintenance tasks. Uh, but this is something we could look more actively on together in, in a one-on-one -on -one demo. The last section I wanted to just quickly show you is the performance section. And here we have gathered a couple of KPIs. Uh, this is for you to get uh, a view over time on the machines. So the first ones, they are for the terminal productivity. Those we see also on the first page. But here then we have an individual productivity graph. So here you can see the productivity for each individual machine. You can also see it per operational hour. So we can see the total productivity and the operational productivity. So we and we typically see this situation that we have a few machines that are highly active. And then we normally in most terminals we see a few machines that are not so active. So um, but this can also allow you to think a little bit of how you want to plan your utilization. So uh, am I using the machines as I expect, or am I putting all the work on one machine and, and I actually would like to put it a little bit more broad? The last one is a quite similar graph looking at alerts. And we can take a quick look back at the machine we previously watched. Now this particular graph loads a lot of data, so you need to be ready to wait a little bit to, for it to load. Let's see. If, yeah, here we get it. So we had these unlock sensor land side left and water side left lost. And you might want to see how that plays out over time. So in this graph, we now see a 30 day summary. Uh, the, the gray mountains in the background is the productivity. So that is how many moves you have been performing. And then the blue and the green bars are those particular issues. It's in many cases when you do troubleshooting, you it's sufficient to just know that we have this problem, it's frequent, we take it into maintenance, we fix it, it's done. But then there are those corner cases, the peculiar cases where there is a problem maybe coming back and somebody says, well, I fixed it. And then you're not really sure, did the fix work? Then you can go here and do a more in-depth analysis and see, well, we actually did the maintenance here on the 12th, we had it in the workshop, but then as soon as we put it out on the crane again, the problem came back. So apparently the fix didn't work. We need to bring it back into the workshop and we need to give it another overhaul and, and probably maybe do something more. Then. So this is something we actually use ourselves quite a bit when we have a machine with a little bit more complicated problems. But all in all, back to the starting page. So we have now quickly gone through all the spread monitoring system. It gives you an overview of the fleet. It helps you to do the troubleshooting. There is also the maintenance planning and the performance. But I, I would say if there is one thing to remember after this webinar, it's the spreader help. As long as you pay attention to and focus on the spreader help, you're in good shape. And, um, and you should have a much more smooth operation 
with less risk for unplanned downtime. So that's the demo. And now we get back to presentation mode here. Hold on two seconds. So my computer is slowly waking up. Yeah, so uh, quick summary then. What SMS, how can SMS solve these key challenges? So first one, the remote ability to have remote visibility. Well, that is typically what the first thing you get here. You, you, you have the information of the machine, but you also have a lot of more information. You have it remotely available. Then this reactive versus proactive. Uh, so with spread monitoring system, this is really an attempt for us to allow you to be proactive uh, and not wait for the spread to break down or get into problems, but actually actively work on the issues you see by remote monitoring. This blank slate diagnostics, when you go out to a broken down machine and try to figure out, well, what was it that made it break down. This is also what we have with these recommended solutions to those 800 issues. So, so we, we try to really point you to where the problem is located so you can spend your efforts in fixing and not fault finding. And then the last one with planned maintenance. Uh, here we have the utilization based maintenance. So we try to also make that much more effective. So that's uh, the quick summary from the demo. And uh, then we move on. All right. Uh, first of all, I would like just to emphasize that you're more than welcome to ask questions in, in the pane, in the panel that you have to the to the right. So, yeah, if you have any questions, just answer, ask them there, and we will uh, cover those in the end. Uh, but then, how actually is how how does it actually work then? So I will take the opportunity to walk you through some of the highlights in how SMS works technically and how we work with the spreader data and the security around that. So the Broma SMS, the, the data that SMS utilizes is actually generated from the machine, uh, from what we call the onboard diagnostic system. Uh, and that data is transferred uh, to the cloud via something that we call the Bromma telematic unit that we mount on all our spreaders. This data is encrypted and transferred over a secure private tunnel over the internet using the, the mobile network. So, and when it reaches the cloud side, uh, the data is actually stored in a secure private cloud. We call it the Bromma IoT cloud. Which, only, which is only accessible by authorized personnel. And all the data is actually also encrypted in the cloud. Uh, and as mentioned, the Broma SMS, that's a cloud-based system, and it runs in a secure private cloud where all the data traffic is also encrypted. And with these all measures in place, uh, we create the unique experience with a cloud-based application that is accessible through pretty much any device, such as a tablet, phone, or PC. All right. Thanks, Hans. And uh, the last section here is then a little bit, how can we help? So how, can we, how does it work to get this started? So now we're gonna look quickly at the startup process for SMS. And we have, three or four steps. It's usually not the very big thing to get going with this. Um, what we typically start to do is a paper-based fleet evaluation. So we just go through the scope of the machines in the terminal we talk about. We do high-level validations just to understand, well, what kind of control systems are you using? What is the connectivity status on these machines? Do we have a BTU on them? Do we not have a BTU? On what can we then do with that? So based on this, we can determine an appropriate roadmap for the implementation. We see in most cases, uh, there is a very big variation. 
bromus feathers have a tendency of lasting for quite a long time and this is something we're proud and happy of but obviously then they have very different statuses so they're uh, for very old spreaders we might need, might need to mount the btu on the newer spreaders it should in most cases already be there so this is the first step just to understand the uh, the fleet status and by that determining an appropriate road map the next step is what we call a digital recommissioning so here we upgrade the onboard software to our latest available versions and this allows us to get up-to-date and reliable diagnostics flowing into sms so this is a very important step it's not super complicated in any way and normally we do it in very close collaboration with the uh, technicians out in the terminal either we can go there and do the software update or maybe you do it yourself with our support uh, it's a little bit case by case but again a very important step not very complicated but needs to be done after this we're ready to go this is cloud-based so we don't need to interfere with any uh, corporate it or anything like that it's as long as you have a web browser uh, preferably one of the more modern web browsers you're ready to go so at the startup then when we have done the uh, fleet evaluation the road mapping the recommissioning so, so the machines are connected and, and communicating as they should we provide login credentials um, and then in the startup process we also try to run status meetings maybe bi-weekly status meetings a little bit case by case as well depending on what you need and what you like to have but we suggest roughly bi-weekly status meetings for the first few months and there we together review the health uh, of the machines we together review we only take the data from sms but we do that together and we review the health we review suitable actions uh, based on the recommendations in the tool we go through them and we figure out ways then to improve performance of the machines in many cases this is quite uh, not so complicated maintenance but we we have seen examples where we find quite peculiar things uh, that would be very hard to detect otherwise obviously in these bi-weekly sessions we also review any type of open questions that there might be to ensure that you get the full value out of the tool that's very important to us then in the long run we uh, are obviously also here to help we can help you do ad hoc analysis we can do more continuous fleet evaluations uh, and here is really up to you uh, what type of support model you prefer but the overall idea is that working with sms should be so intuitive that you you should have very little need for day-to-day -day support this should be something you can very quickly pick up and, and run with yourself but of course obviously we are super happy to help uh, along the process with this we have reached the end of the webinar uh, and i just quickly want to summarize in three main takeaways so number one this proactive fleet monitoring as you can do with sms we believe is a very effective way to minimize downtime. The better information you have, the better chance you have to increase your uptime and thereby your overall efficiency. Second thing, SMS, we really try to make spreader maintenance easy. So we have this one single metric that you need to worry about, the spreader health. And that helps you to, to in a simple way make informed decisions and ensure that issues are being fixed before they become much bigger problems and then finally last step we are here to help so we would work alongside with you during an implementation implementation and a startup both with recommendations but also with hands-on on work if that is needed to ensure that you have the best possibility to get the maximum value out of the application this now concludes the presentation we had planned for today and we will have a short q a if there are any questions i think there actually are a few questions so we'll go through a couple of questions and see if we can provide 
any answers. Hans. All right, so let's see if we have received any questions. Yeah, as I said, please feel free to, to add questions. Yeah, let's choose the first question here. Is the telematic unit included in every new spreader as a standard? Yes, all spreaders leaving factory have this telematic unit included as standard, provided there is no restrictions in con connectivity in the end user country. So in order for us to mount the connectivity, we need to know basically where this spreader is ending up. And if you are at all uncertain or eager to have this, please double check with your uh, sales contact in Roma to make sure that there is connectivity or if there is any limitations that, that those are understood well from the beginning. The, we try to connect every machine, but there are those corner cases where it cannot be done. Uh, let's see what else um, we have. A question here. Yeah, it's, is it possible to integrate the data to uh, other systems such as Maximum? So this is a very good question. Uh, we do have some limited possibilities today. We have been talking about building more of this over time. Um, but basically what we do have is so this maintenance data and the the, the basic counters and those things are available to download from SMS in a CSV file. So, so you can do uh, a basic integration using that. But then as of now, we do not have any API integration. Uh, we are looking at it. I hope we will be able to provide that a little bit further down the road. So it should be coming, but there is also the, the basic starting point already today with the CSV. Uh, we have a question about an accelerometer, if that can be fitted and to record impacts leading to damage. This is also a good question. It's something we actually look at right now. So there is a basic accelerometer already in the BTU. Uh, it's not really strong enough. Uh, spreaders experience extremely <laughs> high impacts and a very, very uh, uh, high G forces. So uh, we are actually right now doing the first uh, analysis of what we can do more with accelerometers. If and when we have that, we should definitely be able to get that data into SMS, but we there is a bit of a journey to get to that point. So we have a little bit of it, uh, but we uh, hope to have a lot more a little bit further down the road. We also have a Question about the estimate that costs per spreader. Also a clear and easy question. Uh, with I try to provide a straight answer. So there is a spreader monitoring system is a subscription-based tool. Uh, there is a subscription per machine, and the cost is 49 euros per machine per month. Uh, and that that is basically what you need. If there is then refurbishment needs on the machine that's is more of a case by case question so if you have a machine that needs to be rebuilt with a, or retrofitted with a btu for instance there that would be a separate discussion but but the subscription costs 49 euros per spreader per month yeah and then i think we have a question about if this can be installed on competitor spreaders uh, as of today we are solely focusing on on Bromma equipment today at this point so yeah that's the answer to that question yes there are a couple of questions around control systems so and i think the quick and easy answer is we support SES 3 SES 4 the SEU yeah. the new one but also relay spreaders can be supported in quite many cases if you have an older control system, you might be looking at the control system upgrade, and then we should have a case-by-case case discussion, basically. Uh, but so SES 3, 4, and SEU are the ones we more plug-and-play support, so to say. 
there was a question about the telecom costs included. Yes, so that goes into the 49 euros. So in the BTU, there is an eSIM, it's called. So it's, a, well, communication is included in this. Um, there is no separate communication cost. And then we have a question about if it could be fitted on an older EH5 spreader. We need to look into that. So I suggest you contact your, your local sales representative that we need to do an evaluation basically to see if it's possible. I'd say it mainly depends on yeah. the control system yeah. again. Yeah. So, so that goes back to the control system yeah. question. Uh, was there anything else or have we covered most of them i think we have covered most of them yeah i with that i think we have gone through the questions but obviously if you have any outstanding questions or anything you felt wasn't answered feel more than free to reach out to me or to hans or to any of your standard day-to-day -day broma contacts we are very happy to talk about this solution and and uh, hope that you are interested too. So with that, we uh, are through the presentations. Uh, we hope you found it interesting and relevant, and uh, we are very glad to have you here. So thank you very much for participating. Yeah, uh, it has been really exciting to having you all on board with us today on this webinar, and we, we hope that we have been able to show you the way to gain full control over your spreader operations. All right, very good. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Questions we have gone through. So uh, with that, we say thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>